Hi, thanks for joining me on Wilderness with Imani. I'm here to fish a section of river along the 80 I've never fished before. It's the stretch above Boca Reservoir, and I'm going to hike up a trail that drops me down into an area that's a little more clear. I fished on the other side a couple days ago for Patreon. I got a nice cut bow, but the fishing was tough. Today, when I got here early this morning, the water was a little bit stained. So I kind of wanted to wait till there was more sun on the water so the fish could see my jig a little better. I just seem to have better luck when the sun's on the water when I'm fishing jigs. That's just something I've put together over experience. Maybe it's 100% true. Maybe it's not true at all. I don't know, but that's what I feel like. It, that's what I feel like the situation is. That a little bit of sun on the water is better. Plus, now that it's warmed up a little, I can have less layers and move around a little easier and not have to wear gloves. But now the sun's right. I'm going to start hiking. I'm not even going to mess around with this stuff uh, near the road. I'm going to hike up over the freeway. There's a place where you can pull off the highway that gets you a little closer to where I want to go. But I'm not big on those tight ent exits and entrances off the freeway where it's like you're landing and taking off from an aircraft carrier. I, I'd rather hike. And plus, the hiking's going to do me good because I got a lot of hiking coming up. So I need to be in shape for that. So let's go hike up the river and let's go see if we can get something. Water's a little bit stained. Yeah, with jigs, that could almost help me. So let's let's go see what we can do. Trout season is a little over a week away when this goes to straight artificial lures only. But right now it is barbless, artificial, catch and release only. I'm gonna fish a couple of these spots and then I'm gonna hike straight up to where it flattens out over there. And then I'm gonna go up and over. I want to go fish behind those boulders, but you know what? I'm just wasting my time right now. <laughs> I want to go up and fish where I haven't fished before. That was the mission. That was the goal. So let's go. Let's go hike a little bit. And stop acting like a child who can't control himself. If you're bypassing this stuff like I am, you should definitely just trust the trail. It goes high and low and high and low but you're gonna run into bushes eventually right there. It's really good looking water right there, but I don't wanna weasel my way out on the other side of these bushes. It's deep right there. This is not a kind of river you wanna fall into. So I'm not gonna bother with it. The water is stained, but the visibility is pretty good. can target fish in fast water like this where I can just run up and down the bank. It's when I'm surrounded by bushes and I have nowhere to go. That's when I got to be careful. I'm fishing this little soft stuff on the side and I had a nice brown come up out of that thing. I didn't feel him so he might go again. I'm going to toss it out there and just jig it through this zone again and see if he'll go. He just missed it. I might have to come back. I might have to bust out the bobber and a fly right now. I ran a bobber through there. I ran a, just a woolly bugger free casting with my spinning rod because that lets me get it deeper and work it a lot slower than a jig. Nothing. Once they swipe at it a lot of times, that's the only time you're gonna see them. So, I should have just kept moving, <laughs> but I can't control myself, so I didn't. Ow, my eighth ounce jig just hit me right in the forehead. I got a hit out there. I went to set the hook and I came up empty and my jig literally just bounced off my forehead and it hurt really bad. I'm fishing this high above the water because I, the shadows are so long and that fish got it. It wasn't that big, but he got it. I'm probably gonna have to stop back here on the way back. I don't know if he'll go again, cause I felt him. Man, I'm fishing some really good water and I'm not getting jack squat. 
I got those two very obvious strikes and I'm sure some have gone after it and missed it that I didn't see, but I'm not, nothing's connecting. I'm trying to work on some retrieves where I don't move the jig so much. All right. This is the worst place in history to hook a fish, but I made a pitch cast under this branch and a, and a brown tried to come up twice and grab it. Will I be able to land it if I can even get him to hit it? I don't know, but he tried twice and he just kept missing it. There he is, there he is. He's in the trees. Get out of that bush. All right, get out of the bush. He's out of the bush. He's out of the bush. I gotta take a shot at this fish because I got trees all around me. I got trees all around me. Oh, my net's caught up. Oh, he's in the net. He's in the net. I'm all wrapped up in the tree, but the fish is in the net. Oh man, that was a, that, the jig's in the tree. I'm, I netted that fish, he had already fallen off the hook. Oh man, I saw him come up. Look at where I am. Okay. Talk about a place I shouldn't even try to make a cast. I let this fish rest for a second, I barely fought him. Ooh, he's got a bad scar on the top uh, dorsal fin. Let me get his head under the water. I can't get his head under the water. These branches are just in the way. I can't believe I landed that fish, man. But I'll show you, he's got a big scar. This guy might not make it long. All right, I'm gonna let him chill for a while. I'm going to hold him up, and then I'm just gonna dip him back in in the net and let him swim out. But it's a nice brown. I just, I can't believe I got him in the net. So he's got, his dorsal fin is jacked up. He's got all kinds of infection going. It's a nice fish, good brown. I can get him in right here. Wham, right back under his tree. This was not the best, this was not the ideal spot to hook a fish, man. But you gotta try. You gotta hook a fish to lose a fish. That will be on my tombstone. There's multiple times a day where I'll make a shot where I'm not sure how I'm gonna catch the fish and get it in. Cause there's branches under the water, above the water. I had my drag way too loose because just a minute ago, I was casting out in the middle of the river. When I'm casting in the middle of the river, I loosen my drag cause with this if they run, you gotta let them run. And with this ultralight tackle, it also makes it hard in a spot like that because I don't really got the leverage to horse them out of there. But we got one in the net. I'm one for three on hook sets I, on fish I could see. I think I've reached the end of the nice cleared brush. So I'm gonna head back down I'm gonna rig up a bobber and a fly, and I'm gonna hit a few of those spots on the way back, especially where I had those fish strike and miss. Then I'm gonna call it a day, because it looks like it's gonna get tough going, and I'm way upstream, so <laughs> I got a long way to go anyway. There's one on the nymph in a bubble. And he is not breaking any records. There we go, little little guy's got a lot of growing to do. That's cool, that guy over there, his name is Jeremy. <laughs> he watches my channel. I tell people that I was like, I never run into you. I run into a lot of people, man, that watch my channel. It's kind of cool. I'm always in there. It's about an hour and a half, maybe even two hours after I caught that brown and I was gonna quit. What I did is I spent a lot of time, once it opened up over there, I fished the, the fast water, because I'm assuming there's gonna be a lot of fast water into the summer. So I wanted to have like a refined technique. I'm already pretty good at fishing fast water, but I wanted something else that I could present as slow as possible when the water's really ripping through. So I, I put in some time and got some practice in. 
I did break through these bushes in a couple of spots that I had it before to fish a couple of spots that I couldn't re that I didn't want to bother with on the way in. And I came this close to getting a fish of the day. <laughs> I broke through these bushes and it wasn't like the one that I landed where the jig was out of its mouth and wrapped around the branch, but somehow the fish was in the net. <laughs> this was, I broke through the bushes, got out and I was standing on a rock. I had branches behind me. I cast it down over some shallow stuff and a big brown came out and sideswiped my jig and just missed it, man. And then I made like 15 more casts, different speeds, everything I could do, because there's only one angle. When you're fishing in tight quarters like that, you might have one shot that you can take. And even if it's not a good one, take it. I found that when you get to these areas that have bushes hanging over the water like this, a lot of times there's some nice fish under that stuff tight in that slow water. The challenge is, can you get through the bushes and in a position to make a cast without spooking the fish? A lot of the times it's no. Like when I was fishing downtown, Reno Sparks and I'd see those fish just sitting under the bushes where the water was still. I'd creep up, try to get there and it would just swim away and I'd just be like, crap. But when the water's a little bit stained, a little higher like it is now, you can get in there. It's just tough. And if your only play is to do a short pitch toss, shut your bail in vertical jig really quick, which is how I got that fish, then that's the play you make. You play the, you play the hand of cards you're dealt. So, this is a great day of exploration. I got a little training time in for myself to further develop my fast water techniques for the summer coming up, because it's gonna be a lot of fast water. It's a good time today. Got that one nice brown in the net. Missed three nice fish. Got one. If you're, good, if you're new to fishing jig fishing, you're gonna learn. It is very frustrating because you're gonna miss a lot of fish you're, you're gonna see. And once they swipe it at once, nine times out of 10, they're not gonna go again. But it is what it is. It's why you gotta keep coming back. Thanks for joining me on Wilderness with Imani. Until next time.